Dosanko is a person from Hokkaido. Uh, and Akio is from Hokkaido, so that was part of it. And, and the Dosanko breed of horse is what they used to like forge the land when they first moved up there. It was like known to be a major workhorse that plowed through the snow and got stuff done. And it's kind of like us yeah. foraging our way into the Vancouver food it's scene. Kind of hidden pushing, meaning pushing of the, our Yoshik food. It's kind of want to spread in Vancouver. The concept of our, our restaurant is a yoshoku. Uh, this is what uh, Japanese people usually eat at home. And so we don't usually eat sushi and sashimi every day. <laughs> Just once a while, occasion or some birthday or some yeah, event. Other than that, we make onigiri, rice bowl, or omurice, curry rice, hamburg. That's uh, my child food, food that I grow up with. And then we make it for kids and my husband. So I didn't, I didn't know it was uh, so new to Such Vancouver, the big deal. Well, Aki kind of. Aki kind of puts her twist on things too, so it was like, yeah. it looked better than it was. Like her oyaku sandwich is like her house made Japanese milk bread and then egg salad and fried chicken cutlet with salad and like crusted with cheese. Yeah, <laughs> I know, tonkatsu. Because he never satisfied just the egg sandwich, so I was like, what should I do <laughs> to so like, make my husband full? So I put them more and more and like, <laughs> and post it, and people were like, what is that? Like, <laughs> so now that's on our lunch menu. And I, like, I couldn't find the, uh, the bread that I like. Uh, I'm used to the Japanese style milk bread, so I started making bread from scratch. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like the, the food is, it's like similar, but different. I always said like when Aki started to cook for me, it was like the Japanese grandmother that I never had because it was so comforting and so familiar, but the ingredients were different. You know, the mirror and sake soy sauce kind of thing was different, but comfortable. So that's when we knew too, it's like, it's different enough to be interesting, but similar enough to not be too out there for our first restaurant. It's kind of like safe, but different at the same time. At the time I was studying English in Edmonton. We met at the food court in the city hall. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then he helped in my homework. That's uh, how we started. Yeah. yeah, I was going to culinary school at the time and uh, saw Akio and we started hanging out and the, the rest is history. Well, I actually was the one who wanted to come to Vancouver. Um, I heard about Chef Robert Beltram and Fuel Restaurant and I heard he was doing whole animal butchery and had a charcuterie program. So basically after I finished up at my job that I was uh, working at, uh, yeah, I left my job, sold all our stuff, packed up my little golf and we moved out here to try work at Fuel. When I went to culinary school, it was my goal to open a restaurant eventually after I learned how to operate a restaurant. Um, so it was kind of always in the back of my mind what we were going to do, what kind of concept. And I bounced around from concept to concept. And then um, the time it really struck was when I was chef at Campagnolo and Akio was taking care of the kids. She was a stay-at-home mom and she was making me dinners and we started to post it on social media 
And all of our friends were like, what is this? Where can we get it? Can we be adopted by your family? And it was kind of like, oh, I think we're onto something. It was actually Akio's birthday, July 17th. 2017 we opened. We did a big press release and had a media party and we were very busy off the bat and we were not ready off the bat. <laughs> we yeah. had a lot of uh, working holiday students working for us that had never worked in restaurants before. So it was, uh, it was very challenging at the beginning. Cares. Yeah. Aki was stuck out here trying to orchestrate it and I was stuck on the busiest station trying to uh, figure everything out and we were definitely in over our head. It took a while to plane out, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, now we're starting to get the hang of it. Yeah, we didn't have a much budget, so if we could, we could put in the <laughs> middle of downtown, whatever. Good, but... I, I feel like I was kind of looking in Strathcona mm -hmm. area, old Japan town. Definitely, I was hoping that there was something that would come up around here. Uh, we live in East Van. Um, our kids go to Japanese school. Uh, we love that we opened a Japanese restaurant in Japan town, and there's like. Uh, Japantown revitalization groups that have been through here and happy to see us and want us to be involved in their programs and uh, we, we also feel it's a real up-and-coming area here uh, of course it's affordable and uh, rent is actually reasonable here it's one of the last areas in Vancouver where rent is reasonable Coincidentally, it used to be a Japan town. So some elder customers saying that, oh, the Japanese restaurant came back to this area, like uh, they appreciate mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we've had guests almost in tears saying that this is where they used to hang out and that all went away. And now to be sitting in a Japanese restaurant in this area, all these years later is really pretty touching and they tell us stories about it and tell us about Aki's and all the different places that used to be here and it feels it feels really good mm -hmm. it's it's pretty neat yeah felt uh, kind of meant to be mm -hmm, definitely right. many things fell into place to make this happen and we couldn't have really done it anywhere else and it's perfect for us also, this building has a, like a perfect, like exploding wood and brick, and I we wanted just simple, and this was just perfect when we look at. Yeah, you can't, you can't really buy this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, when I I worked in a restaurant in Edmonton, and uh, the maitre d was like the most warm, welcoming gentleman the epitome of a maitre d' that I've worked with and he made it feel like you were in his living room when you came into the restaurant and that's definitely the way the feel of the restaurant that I wanted just cozy comfortable not pretentious at all just like sitting around in our living room and that was definitely a big part of finding this space it's it's got that grandma's house feel and smell <laughs> and you know and, and that's perfect for what we want to do just yeah. high quality food but in a relaxed atmosphere and a, a bit of a lower price point that more people can afford and the food I mean I think it goes along with that you know it's it's comfort food um, but it's it's the love is put into it and we're lucky to be in BC where there's so many great farmers and producers and foragers. Um, we've established relationships and nurtured them for years with different farmers and producers and um, those are the first people we called when we were starting to open our doors to get, to get our products. That's it, we can actually make food that tastes good and we feel good serving because we'd serve the same food to our family, you know, wild salmon and 
local, locally raised animals, heritage breed animals, and uh, beautiful produce, foraged greens, forage products. It's been it's been great for us. Um, yeah, we definitely um, appreciate everyone's Instagram love and spreading it out in all the different directions. And so many people come in and say, we saw your Instagram or we saw our friend's Instagram. And that's like most of, that's like pretty much all of our marketing. We don't have a huge marketing budget and we don't have a team or anything like that. So we rely on that and word of mouth and slowly but surely we're, we're building up, so. So many lessons we've learned. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, there's uh, some famous Dosanko ramen shop in Japan, and people think Dosanko, the, our restaurant was ramen shop first. And then also other people see, oh, this is Japanese restaurant. Do you have sushi, right? Where's your um, rolls? Sorry, <laughs> we don't have sushi. And then, yeah, it was, uh, it was a hard beginning to explain our food what it's like. That's, yeah, it is different enough that people haven't really heard of it, although it's super common for us and natural for us. Some people are like, if you don't do sushi and you don't do ramen, like, what do you do? <laughs> so that's been kind of a thing. But once people try it, it's kind of what we thought. We just need to get people to taste it, taste our food, and then they'll, they'll understand. <laughs> Maya, we're almost finished, okay? Okay. Sorry. Maya, please. Oh. Oh, sorry, but it's fine. So it must be honestly very difficult to get on. This has definitely been the biggest challenge of my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Opening a restaurant hard. Yeah. is so hard. In mm -hmm. Vancouver is so difficult. With your wife <laughs> is challenging. And then throw yeah. two kids in the mix. Yeah. Two. Two. Yeah, yeah but uh, four and seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but we're, we're figuring it out, you know, we're making it happen. And I'm happy that the kids get to be here. And my other jobs, they're obviously not around and I didn't get to see them a lot. So here it's, you know, we get to see them and we get to hang out. And Maya likes to be involved in things and Liam's a little more quiet and hides off a bit. But we get to have some time together and and they get to see us working and I feel like that's pretty important to yeah. And also we have a space and we have we have a little play area mm -hmm. that definitely parents can appreciate it. Absolutely. <laughs> it kinda of opens that window when we were mm -hmm. when we first had the kids we had a difficult time going out for dinner. Mm -hmm. People don't like kids in restaurants. We got shushed plenty of times. Mm -hmm even at a restaurant I was chef of. Um, <laughs> so we wanted to have, we liked the idea of Little Nest. We lived by there and it closed and we wanted to have something like that. So, so A, our kids could be occupied and B, parents can come and expand that half hour, 45 minutes to maybe an hour, hour, 15 minutes, get a glass of wine, have some sake and the kids are happy playing. And we also have a kid's meal, not a kid's menu like cheap options for kids yeah. that is a pretty big hit too. Yeah. Uh, we're just, we're constantly re revising and evolving and taking things to the next level. I mean, we haven't even been through a full year um, to cycle through all of our menu items, but we like to, we have some staple menu items that stay on year round, but we also have things that change. We definitely want to have people like wanting more at the end of the season, like uni season just finished up and we put a big advertisement on 
social media saying this is it, the last of the uni, and everyone came in and like, oh, the uni, and then we switched to the duck udon, and then we'll cycle through that into the um, kiash chuka, the cold noodles in the summer. So we're just finding our, finding our groove and finding all of our dishes, and we just keep trying to evolve and make the food better and make the service better, and just keep learning and pushing getting better.